Hi everybody, my name's Zach Bennett. I'm a Microsoft Teams MVP and Principal Architect at LoopUp, and today we're going to be talking around call queues. Call queues are also known as response groups or hunt groups. They're effectively a way to, once the calls are inside your business, how do you distribute those to your users or your agents in certain cases so they can take those calls efficient, efficiently? Let's jump into the Teams Admin Center again. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down under voice on the left hand side, find the call queues section. We've got a couple of call queues inside of here, but this is where we can come in and add new ones, edit, delete, and also look at some reports based on these call queues themselves. Let's jump into this test call queue here. We can name the call queue at the top, something like sales call queue, support call queue, something like that. Make sure they are named appropriately because when we are linking these call queues together or adding them into auto attendance, it's important to be able to distinguish which queue is being added where, and that's done all via that name. One thing we can do with call queue straight away is we can add a direct number to that call queue as well. So let's say this was a sales number. Um, we can have a sales number that if someone was to ring, they would hit that queue directly. Uh, but what we can also do as well is using that number, we can assign calling IDs. So we can let those agents be able to dial outbound as the number of the particular queue, shielding their personal DDI until they want to give that out to the end user. This is simply done inside of here. We can add the resource account for this particular queue. And then that will now be used for CLI and allow the agents to make calls as this number. Inside of here as well, we have the service level threshold. So this is a newer metric that's come to the Microsoft Teams phone system. And it will basically allow you to be able to see how efficiently your queues are being used. So you can come inside of here, you have a maximum of 40 minutes, uh, as low as 15 seconds. So effectively, if you want all of your calls for this particular queue to be answered within 30 seconds, you can have that on here and that will allow you to measure how your uh, service is doing against your um, metrics. Here as well, we have the choice of language. So very similar to the auto attendance, we can put the language we require and we also have different dialects and this is what's used to transcribe voicemail messages for this queue and also play any prompts such as greetings. Speaking of greetings, this is the first thing that we're asked about for this particular queue. So we can add a greeting message in here. This will be typed and read out in the dialect that we choose on the other screen. Also, we have the option for music on hold. So you can choose the standard music on hold options for Microsoft Teams. This is a two minute loop that will play when someone is waiting in a call, or you could choose to upload your own music on hold music. And what this will do will play while the user is waiting for an agent to pick up their call once they're inside of the queue. Now we have the ability to choose who our agents are. Okay, uh, there's a couple of different ways we can do this within Microsoft Teams. We can choose to find those users and add them into the particular queue as so. We can also choose to add groups. If you do add a group, it will do alphabetical order for that particular queue. So if you have something like serial routing, it will choose to go alphabetically through that queue. Whereas if you have users, it will choose whichever user is top to go first in a serial routing scenario. As well as this, we also have the option to choose a team. So what we can do is come inside of here and choose a channel. Let's search for a particular channel inside of here. We have our Sales USA team. I can choose to add that team. I'll add the general channel. So anybody that is considered, uh, that is in that team, in that channel and has uh, the correct Microsoft licensing, they will now be an agent in that queue. Next, we have the ability to, once we know who our agents are, how are we going to distribute these calls to those particular agents? 
So our first routing method is attendant routing. What this will do, the first call that hits that queue, all of your agents will hear the notification and get the notification. The first person to answer that call gets that call, okay? Next, we have serial routing. This will do one by one in the queue. So as the calls come in, they will go top to bottom in the queue. And you, uh, if someone doesn't answer, the first person doesn't answer, it'll go to the second. The second person doesn't answer, it'll go to the third. But then that next call that hits the queue will go to the first person again, then the second, then the third, and so on. Next, we have the round robin. What when round robin is being used, this is seen as, as quite a fair way for uh, calls to be distributed across your queues. What it will do, it will use an algorithm in the background to try and make sure that throughout the day, all of your agents are getting similar amounts of calls. So if, if, if agent one in the queue has answered three calls, whereas agent three has only answered one, that next call that's coming in, agent three will get that call and it will skip agent one in the queue. Lastly, we have the longest idle. What this is doing is it's using that presence that we get in Microsoft Teams. So green for available um, or red for busy or in a call. And what it's doing is whoever has been considered available for the longest in that queue, whichever agent, they are going to be getting that next call in that queue. One nice thing as well that you can do for these particular queues. So I'll jump back to the attendant routing, for example. I can choose to turn on presence-based routing for these other queues. So this will honor if you are uh, red and in a meeting. Teams is going to know that and it's going to say, okay, I can't pass the call to this particular person because they're not available. Let's pass it to someone else. And you can choose to turn this on and off for particular queues. If, for example, you had a VIP queue and, you know, no matter what, I want these calls to be answered as soon as possible, let's get off the phone and answer this VIP call. We can turn this presence-based routing off. So even if you're in a call, you're going to get that notification that this queue is going off. In here as well, we have the option to allow agents to opt out of taking calls themselves. So within the Teams client, they can effectively hit a toggle box and they will step out of that queue. We'll go into this in another video um, a little later on, but you have the option in the Queues app where supervisors of queues can choose to enable users or log people back into that queue. Um, without that functionality, if this is turned on, an agent can choose to leave that queue there's no way for you as a supervisor to add them back in, okay? Next, we have the agent alert timer. So this is how long that toast notification or that pop-up will ring on that agent's desk until moving on to the next person in the queue. Next, we have callback. I'll go into this uh, high level now, but we will do a further in-depth call of this. But this effectively allows you to allow uh, users to get a callback for their queue. So then it effectively will save their place in the queue. And then when um, a callback is enabled and that user chooses that, they will effectively get a callback um, so they're not waiting around with the whole music for any particular uh, length of time, but it will mean uh, an agent needs to come back uh, to available to be able to to make that outbound call to the to the waiting caller. But in here we can see we can set our particular conditions. Um, you know how how long you want people to wait before they're offered that uh, call back in the queue or how many particular people are waiting in that queue or um, things like that. Also, this is the alert message that's played. So call back and say, press one for call back or you can upload your own audio file here. A nice little feature in the call back here as well is if that call back could not be completed for whatever reason, then there will be an email sent to a to a M365 group, basically giving the number and any information that an agent would manually need to reach back out to that person um, to to make that callback request. 
Next, we have exception handling. So once the calls are in the queue, this is where we can set how we want these calls to be handled uh, if an exception comes up. So for example, um, how many calls would I like queuing uh, on, my, on my call queue at any one time? I'd actually only like five, okay? Um, this is throwing a warning because of the callback settings at the moment. Um, and we'll go, we'll go into that a little bit more during a full callback call. Um, but effectively, what we can say is, so when the sixth call comes into this particular queue, what would we like to do? We could choose to just disconnect that call if we wanted, or we can play an audio file, then disconnect the call, or a greeting message, please ring back again later, something like that. But what we can do as well, and what's usually best practice, is we can redirect this call somewhere else in the organization. I can redirect it to one particular person, to another voice app, to an external phone number, or to a voicemail of a personal um, user's voicemail, or an M365 group. So let's say we had a um, first and second line. What we can say, if no one answers in the first line, then what we can do is escalate that call to our second line team and they will take that particular uh, call instead. So we could choose to redirect that call, not play a greeting message, or we could say we are transferring you to another team um, and then that will transfer that call to that particular person, to that particular team. So that's call overflow. Very similarly so, we have a call timeout. And this is how long you would like people to be waiting in your particular queue before they are passed on to someone else. So in here, it's set to 5 minutes and 45 seconds. If um, you were in this queue for 5 minutes and 46 seconds, what would happen is we would redirect this call to an, uh, another ex external number and it would play a greeting message. No one is available to take your call. You will now be disconnected. Something like that, for example. Lastly, we have this section here, which is what we can do if there are actually no agents that are opted in or signed into this particular queue. So what would happen before is it would queue that user until either one of the other exceptions hit, but now, Teams PBX is getting a little bit smarter and it's able to say, well, there's no one in this queue to be able to take your call. So what would we like to do instead? Okay, we can choose if we wanted to still queue that call. So if there is no one opted into the queue or available to take the call, but maybe they're, they're expected to come on online soon or into the queue soon, you can choose to just queue calls and they will wait for these other exceptions to hit before doing anything else. Or we can choose to redirect that call, disconnect that call, or redirect that call somewhere else in the organization. Like I said, another queue, a person, an external phone number, or some voicemail options in here. Lastly, in here, what we have is uh, the authorized users. And what these are is the, um, these are the ability to allow users to make particular changes against these queues. So if you wanted to do this, for example, let me just make this change and we can go ahead to the authorized users. We have two users here that are added um, as authorized users. So both Jeff and Alan for this particular call queue can make any changes such as greeting messages or if we were to look into some of the more uh, complex um, premium features which are available in the call queue such as editing membership or changing how the queue actually routes these are the users that are able to do that because they are set as authorized users against this particular queue so that was a little whistle stop tour on call queues um, next i think we'll do a video talking a little bit more about that callback functionality and see if we can see that in action and also talking around the queues app themselves but hopefully that's give you a little bit of an overview of once those calls are inside of your organization how you can best um, disperse those out to your agents so they're able to take calls efficiently if you have any questions or queries 
please leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to help out. Thank you.